Fabulous show. Alaska. I heard the Alaska. It's hard. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You can hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Jeannie's show. It's the alley you get independent. Hello everyone and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. Today's program is very, very special. For the first time in the history of Native American Alaska Native Television, we are aired in Taiwan, in an Asian country. And we will begin our program by showing you that news package complete with Chinese graphics and Chinese translation. And then later on in the program, we travel the state sharing news about spit tobacco or Chew. It's a great show. Thanks for joining us. Alaska的巴罗市是伊努特族最多的一个城镇。今天从波罗看天下，我们就要请阿拉斯加原住民制作人Jenny This week we travel to Barrow, Alaska, where the Inupiaq people are celebrating a feast called Kivikik years ago to fight the loneliness in the vast wilderness. The native people would gather together and celebrate, and today this celebration is keeping the spirit alive on the coast of Barrow, Alaska. <laughs> Kivu is a hot location. You just feel so proud of being in Inupia. The northern. 北美洲最北端的城市巴罗，有许多伊努特族人正举行一场称为祈福即刻的庆典。Despite the cold weather, the warmth of the people. 尽管天气寒冷，住在北方的伊努特族还是长途跋涉来到这里相聚。他们传统的交通工具是驯鹿雪橇，不过现在大家觉得多花一点钱坐飞机，与家人和朋友相聚也是很值得的。So everybody closer together and remind us that you know we do still have our cultures in each village, even though technology is there. 分享食物，说传统故事，互赠礼物是活动的重点，而最主要的活动就是跳舞。Let's welcome the Tikka traditional dancers. I'm sitting here my on my boat. 庆典中用表演传递古老的故事，每一个动作都有意义。Some songs tell stories. Gotcha. You gotcha. Yeah. Some songs just do motion, just. It doesn't have words, just uh, music to dance by. It's when you're performing something you can't describe. It's an unbelievable feeling. Our Inupiaq culture comes alive. The people of Northern Alaska. 
，住在阿拉斯加最北端的这群人了解他们文化的重要性，而母语、歌舞和口传故事的教育则成为文化的根源。The Inupiaq people have a tradition of sharing. That's a way of survival. And we are carrying on that tradition by sharing our news with you. ITV News. Thank you. For Heartbeat Alaska and ITV News, I'm Jeannie Green. To the glaciers. Thank you, everyone at Indigenous Television Network for sharing your news with us. And we thank you for putting Heartbeat Alaska on across your beautiful nation. Now we travel across our beautiful state, sharing the news of spit tobacco or chew. In Alaska, in many rural villages, it's common to use and share smokeless tobacco, also known as spit tobacco. You may know it by other names, Chew, Black Bull, Copenhagen, Skoll, Ikvik, Punk Ash. Spit tobacco is placed in the mouth rather than smoked. It comes in many forms, such as loose leaf in plugs or twists, snuff and ash added to tobacco leaves, known as Ikvik. You see it everywhere, everyone uses it. Everyone makes it. You see little kids um, chewing what we call ikmik, or now Copenhagen. Um, so it's just everywhere, everywhere you turn, you see kids using it. And it's nothing that's discussed very much. It's just like a way of life. Ikmik, also known as Black Bull, is very popular in the Yukon Delta region because some of its ingredients are easy to find. Black Bull is, well, it's called Ikhmik. What they do is they buy tobacco leaves and they get punk ash from the tr trees wherever they grow and they mix them together with the mouth. Mary Beth and Alexandra Bethel are two young ladies who are changing the world, or at least their own worlds. After years of using Ikhmik, these young ladies made the decision to quit. One of the hardest things they've ever had to do. I started chewing when I was, I think I was 10 years old. And I started chewing Copenhagen. And I chew Black Bull. I first started chewing when I was, I think, 12 years old. Um, and it, I think it was caused from peer pressure. And, well, I tried it once and I got addicted. And it was pretty bad. And I tried quitting tobacco since, I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's really hard to try, or to try to quit tobacco, I think. Some people think chewing is safer than smoking cigarettes. It's not. Nicotine causes your blood vessels to become hard and narrow. This makes your heart beat faster and harder. For pregnant women, smokeless tobacco is as bad as cigarettes or even worse. 
Its use can cause pregnancy-induced hypertension with high blood pressure and vaginal bleeding. Something this bad for the mom can't be good for the baby. In fact, spit tobacco has been shown to have negative effects on the development of unborn children. Is it worth it to carry a baby for nine months and all the while be putting that baby at risk? Spit tobacco is very addictive because of the nicotine which is found in all forms of tobacco. Tobacco manufacturers count on your addiction to nicotine to keep you as a customer, to keep you chewing every day. And if you do that, you place yourself at risk for many serious health problems like heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, and heart attack. Along with the nicotine, spit tobacco also contains carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, polonium-210, aldehydes, seven types of N-nitrosamines, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, lead found in nerve poison, hydrocarbons found in car exhaust, cadmium used in car batteries, sodium, salt, which should be used in moderation. These chemicals cause an incredible number of problems inside the mouth. Wounds, cold sores, cuts, wear and tear on tooth enamel because of the grit and sand found in chew, tooth decay and cavities because of the sugar that is added to chew, receding gums when tobacco juice irritates gum tissues, loss of taste and smell making you use more sugar and salt, exposed roots, sensitivity to hot and cold, increase of tooth and gum decay, early tooth loss, and hairy tongue. Hairy tongue is the overgrowth of cells on the tongue, and that's caused by using chewing tobacco. I noticed I'd get canker sores or cold sores grow growing. And so I noticed in high school I'd be chewing instead of eating. So, yeah. I'd be, like instead of eating, I'd want to chew, and that's not, un that's unhealthy. I started doing that when I was around 13, I would say. I was playing baseball, and I've seen a lot of baseball players chew tobacco, so that's what I did, and it's basically, uh, I started before I, um, smoked, and, uh, I don't know, I was, till I was about 15 or so, 14 or 15, that I quit chewing. I had uh, problems with that. I had uh, swollen glands. That uh, The grains would get stuck in my, uh, where the saliva comes out, and it'd get, my glands would swell up. I'd get hot, I was hospitalized four times because of that. So after the fourth time, I quit. I used to get sick a lot, like um, sore throat, coughing, um, the cold, the flu. It was pretty bad. When people mix ikmik in their mouth, their heart starts to pound hard and fast, and they may feel dizzy and sick to their stomach. These are symptoms of nicotine poisoning. It can happen when you mix ash with tobacco, which increases the speed of delivery of nicotine into your system. Nicotine poisoning also causes seizures, throwing up an extra spit in the mouth. The first signs are white patches in the mouth. Leukoplakia is the name for those leathery white patches inside the cheeks or on the gums. These are the first signs and they often appear where the tobacco is held. Probably the first person to discover this will be your dentist. If you are using chew, make sure you get an oral exam and have the dentist check for white leathery patches. Spit tobacco use also increases the risk for cancer of the mouth, esophagus, the tube that food passes through, larynx, your voice box, stomach, and pancreas. Oral cancer grows in the lips, cheeks, tongue, throat, gums, larynx, and esophagus. Those who survive it can be disfigured after surgeons remove cancerous bone and tissue. Slightly more than half of patients with oral cancers live five years. 
Knowing all this information, it would seem that people who use chewing tobacco or tobacco in any form would quit using this deadly substance. But the truth is, nicotine and the chemicals found in tobacco are so addictive that quitting can be a lifelong struggle. In the village of Tuluksac, located on the YK Delta, the battle to quit tobacco use is ever present. Community health aides Josephine Gregory and Marlene Phillip face the fact that they are addicted to chewing tobacco and that quitting it is very hard to do. When I don't chew, I, I easily get mad. I get very edgy and sleepy and tired. I'm really trying to quit, but it's very hard for me to quit. I've been trying to quit for maybe two years now. Sometimes when I chew too much, I feel sick, nauseated, and, um, and if I don't chew, I'll still feel nauseated and like weak and tired. I think it's a really bad, bad habit. I really don't like it. I'm still fighting myself to try and quit. It's just so bad, especially when you're trying to quit chewing. My, me, myself, it's hard. I get so angry and frustrated when I don't have it. I'll um, start getting mad at my husband if I don't get it when I really want it. I'll just, you know, get that stress from not chewing. And it's also bad for the community because when kids grow up watching their parents chew tobacco and they think it's fun habit and they also want to try and pretty soon they're addicted to it and it's not really good and other kids see that from their friends and want to start chewing too and it's it's just bad it, it needs to stop tobacco in any form is dangerous for children their young bodies and brains are still developing the nicotine and chemicals in tobacco work on their growing, developing cells and can cause great harm. Some of the problems children might have if they use tobacco include slow learning, tooth decay and tooth loss, slow growth of the lungs, asthma attacks, more ear infections, constant cough. We all hope for healthy, bright, productive and happy kids, but just hoping doesn't make it so. The choices you make, your actions, can make a difference between a healthy child and a child whose life is forever compromised. If you use chew or tobacco in any form, you can be throwing all those hopes out the window. Children exposed to tobacco can be sick more often and are at a disadvantage. No parent wants that for their children. If you start them on smokeless tobacco or ICMIC, you start the addiction. Kids given any tobacco are more likely to smoke. Don't forget, almost 90% of tobacco users begin at or before the age of 18. With many starting even younger, some before their teens and in their early teens, it is easier to become addicted at such an early age. And the longer addiction has its hold on you, the more difficult it can be to stop. The good news is, if you want to kick the habit, help is available. More and more people of all ages are becoming tobacco-free with the help of local and statewide programs. Carrie Enoch is the senior counselor with the Nicotine Control Program of Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation, located in Bethel, Alaska. Not only does this program assist people through the process of quitting tobacco, but it also takes preventative measures through educating the community and the kids. And nicotine causes our blood vessels to constrict, which makes the heart work pump extra hard, trying to push blood through the smaller than normal blood vessels. Constrict is makes the <coughs> blood vessels small and hard, and that causes the heart to work extra hard. And that can lead to heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. Our program was opened as a pilot program in 2000 and then uh, by fall of 2001 we opened all the clinics and we were able to see patients from all the clinics in the hospital. We started off with a few patients from one of the clinics as a pilot program and now we've grown to uh, we 
we've seen like about 2,000 patients now and we have over 700 patients in our program today. I got involved with it because um, I tried to quit um, during tobacco, using tobacco, and I, I like really wanted to quit, but I was like so addicted that I, I just couldn't drop it like that. So um, I heard of the, pro the program before, so I decided to go over there and ask for help. And they, they gave me some patches and some nicotine gum. And I started using those as they, as they directed. And I just quit using tobacco after that. And it's been really great. These programs are working in rural Alaska. People who have used tobacco for over half their lifetime are quitting with the help and support of these programs. Richard Johnson of Dillingham chewed tobacco and smoked cigarettes for over 30 years. Well, I started when I was 16, I started smoking cigarettes. And uh, 16 to 46, it's been cigarettes and chewing tobacco off and on. I primarily smoked cigarettes two-thirds of that time. And then when I started working on the, uh, up on Prudhoe Bay and at the, uh, out in the Cook Inlet on the platforms, I started chewing because, of course, they wouldn't let you smoke. So then I was kind of double dipping, they call it, getting into both of them, and I wasn't, uh, wasn't working. I didn't really have the support group until I started working at the hospital and they had the tobacco cessation there and they provided me with what I needed to, to kick this habit. There are a number of ways to keep from using chew and other tobacco products. First, identify use triggers. Develop ways to modify behaviors and situations that increase your risk of relapse. Find alternative activities, distractions. Use oral substitutes like Smoky Mountain, Golden Eagle, or Oregon Mint. Try chewing jerky or sunflower seeds. You have to quit. If you want to live a long and healthy life, you have to quit. I've got a four-year-old daughter in there, and she probably knows more about the harmful aspects of nicotine than, than some kids older her age because she's seen it, and I want her to be aware of it. And when she when she gets of age, I hope she'll be so terrified of nicotine she won't even won't even leave, won't even try it. I can almost guarantee she won't use it. She may experiment. They all do it, you know, when they get to be teenagers and that. But uh, and even the even the eight month old is going to be the same way. I'm going to drill them until until they know the harmful effects of nicotine. But as words of advice, don't please don't ever start. And if you, you know, think of your family. Do it. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for your family. If you don't have kids, do it for your mom and dad. Do it for your friends. Do it for your girlfriend. Find somebody to do it for, because that kind of helped me, you know. These kids are young, and I'm kind of old, and I want to live, and I want to see them graduate high school and maybe college and be a granddad someday, and, you know, I have no choice. If you are hooked, if you are addicted on tobacco, you have to just keep trying because studies have shown that it takes the average person seven tries before stopping for good. So you have to keep trying. If you don't succeed the first time, try again and then try again. Pretty soon you will stop and seek help. You can call, call us or call your providers and they'll direct you to where you need to go for help. I felt free <laughs> and healthy. It was really good. My body felt stronger and um, I felt stronger mentally because um, I, I quit and um, I thought before that I wouldn't be able to quit. And I did. That's what I was happy about the most. People just need to need to stop and think of the harmful effects of nicotine and the addiction. It's very addictive. And and if like me, if you need help, there is support groups out there. Find one that suits you, and find the method of uh, quitting that, that suits you, and, and and just take some time and try to find the best approach that you that, that's good for you, and 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 do it that way. I mean, it's 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 so addictive that you have to approach it in a in a I don't know 
for lack of a better word, a business-like approach. It's something you have to stay on top of. You have to constantly think about. You have to constantly be aware of where you're at and what you're doing when you're addicted to nicotine. And, and that's just kind of the way I've done it. That might not be good for some people, but it's worked for me, and it's working for me. Get help setting up a quit plan by contacting a local counselor or the Alaska Tobacco Quit Line and set a quit date. Help is available. All you have to do is ask. Give yourself all the help you deserve. If you would like a copy of this program for your school library, contact me, Jeannie Green, at 907-563-7440. For all of us here, God bless you. Join me again next week, won't you, for Indigenous Television here in this state. And welcome again, Taiwan, to Heartbeat Alaska Native News. <laughs> Thank you for watching 7月4th.